Hey guys, welcome to this episode of the Go Mango Toku Cast. I'm your host of Frozen Stratos. Here with me to today we have just me. Uh because I scheduling issues happened and I have to do this alone. That's fine. Uh we'll get through it. We will get through Common Rider Build Episode 7. A a fire truck just went by. I don't know if that got picked up on the mic. Hope it did, or else I sound crazy. On this episode, uh, we got the introduction of Rocket Panda and my dude. Or, I, you know what? I don't want to assume gender. Whoever's watching this, we got freaking Rocket Panda. Rocket Panda. How is that not adorable? I, I really, really like that form. Uh, I think it's coming in uh, wave two of the show, Soto line. The Soto lab. Labo line for build, so I'm really excited to get that. Uh, yeah, it was a, a really cool form. It's kind of, I mean, it's it's Toku convenient how it is a, a best match, but that's fine. I don't care. Um, and we get to see a bit of the descent between uh, Blood Stark and Night Rogue. Uh, it's it's becoming more and more clear that maybe night i mean uh blood stark is uh gonna be the coffee shop owner um i mean he is gone for large swaths of episodes so that i mean that could be the case i don't really want it to be but then again he's becoming the sort of like anti-hero i'm not 100 percent sure um and we also get to find out the identity of night rogue now, again, you should have watched the episode before this, so, you know, if you haven't, there are spoilers coming up, and also if you haven't, that eye icon right there will take you to the Kamen Rider Build watch along, so if you you need a partner to watch it with, I got you back right there for you. Anyway, um, yeah, we we get to see Scragglebeard take up the, uh, the, the Night Rogue mantle, um, and I love that henshin. The the like the the henshin phrase that goes out, the fireworks that, that appear, it's all so cool. And it's like like very steam based. Um a a commenter uh and I we were having a discussion that I feel like is pretty relevant to this topic. Um Again, Flying Kite and I were talking about uh, the the implications of of his powers and how he got them, uh, and the idea of um, Night Rogue and and uh, Bloodstank being uh, you know people that have survived the Smash thing, the you know becoming Smashes, but then were just human still. Um, just like Banjo and Sento. But, uh, I was, I, I had theorized, so he had theorized that they had previously been, you know, uh, hit with the, the smash gas. I forgot what, nebula gas. And, um, I was thinking maybe they're artificially, uh, using that gas because their design has lots of pipes in it, more so than build, because build, uh, at his core, doesn't have many pipe patterns, but, um, you know, the evil ones do, and that leads me to believe that the, the steam is just sort of coursing throughout the suit, and it's powering the suit, and they're using the steam-powered suit. The steam isn't coming from them for the suit to be used, it's just in the suit. Um, <coughs> and we, we get to see that it's all over the henshin as well. Uh, steam is, is largely, uh, what I guess creates the suit and also they're able to you they can also use the nebula gas to, to infect other people right then and there. So I, I personally don't think that they were experimented on. Uh, initially, but it could still be the case, and I could still be wrong, so, you know, don't quote me. Um, 
we also get this really, I guess, like, hokey revelation. Like, oh, hey, he left a final message. Also, Romanize it, put it into an anagram, and I think that's our next clue. That is, that is a lot. That is a lot to assume. But I suppose it's working just because, like, we haven't, each clue they've gotten like they've gotten yeah they it hasn't led them into a uh a brick wall yet it hasn't been a dead end we haven't seen a dead end clue um and i feel like at some point they have to stop being successful uh at figuring out what the plot is because sometimes like they they keep progressing but there aren't it doesn't feel like we're stopping them it doesn't feel like uh they're making any wrong assumptions i mean like again it is the beginning of the show so i'm hoping <laughs> i mean i keep saying i love how how frustrated that they are and they keep you know progressing and stuff but it, it feels like we haven't really hit a significant significant like roadblock that they won't be getting past in the next episode um but yeah, either way, it, it takes them to uh, Hokuto, or, th yeah, they live in Toto, but they went to Hokuto, that's fine. Hey, Banjo's in a, <laughs> he's wearing a clown suit, that was a thing this episode. That, I, it, it, in, in the history of, of Kamen Rider, and in all my uh, viewings of various seasons, never have I suspected that we'd ever get a Kamen Rider in a clown costume. Though, I could be wrong. I, it might have happened before. I'm not as well-versed in past ones am I, as I am, like, you know, recent ones. But, dude's in a clown suit. <laughs> it's freaking great. Um, let's see. I liked the, um, how, how they sort of handled them... <laughs> introducing themselves to uh, uh i don't know what his name is and i you know the mother the mother of the dude that either sento or banjo didn't or did or didn't murder um their introduction to her like sure it was shaky at first and they and she didn't obviously she didn't want to have anything to do with them but um they were quickly able to establish that, oh, they're good guys, they're fighting this threat, and also, hey, compounded onto that, this threat? Um, yeah, your son. Your son may have created this threat, and he might not be the guy that you, uh, knew him to be. So, instantly, like, that fight scene, uh, and the scene after it, set up a lot of conflict uh that i think was very necessary and a lot of uh relationships that were very necessary to lead us into the next episode um the the episodes usually uh lead off on mysteries that uh are new to us uh are new to the audience and are new to the characters but the what the the lead into the next episode is is um breaking it to the mother that hey yeah your son kind of sucked um so it, it's it's a very different lead-in and i'm interested to see because like again usually it's a plot thing that they lead in with and it's it's neat to see that it is an emotional thing this time um i don't know what that says about this show as a whole but I'm glad they are leaning into that emotion and kind of capitalizing on that because it is a character that we are just introduced to. Um, but you immediately get, uh, understand the, the, you see, we don't have to spend a lot of time with the mom to understand, uh, why she should be invested in the story or invested in this section of it. So it was really nice to see them not necessarily gloss over it, but like, quickly establish it and then quickly pay it off in the next episode and it isn't a a thing of like 
oh, this person was has been deeply connected the whole time because they've been in every episode. No, no, no. It is because of her immediately, like, like relatable relationship with one of the characters in the show. Uh, we also establish um, who she is and how she lives without the said person, without that said meaningful person. So we understand uh, as much as we need to, to get as much of the investment as we can in as little time as possible. It's very efficient. It's very quick. And I like it. It's efficient storytelling. We don't have to go through an episode of setup with her. Um, Cause even though this was her debut episode, we barely got introduced to her or like she barely had screen time. We just, you know, completely understand um, what the conflict is. I, I like that. I, um, again, it's efficient. Uh, it's not, I don't feel like it's wasting my time and, and build has not been wasting time at all ever. So, um, it is very, it is very them to, to keep that up. Um, those were actually the, the major points that I wanted to hit this episode. Uh, we did get, you know, some more Misora stuff, uh i love misora she's great uh also reporter girl has to do more things than just stand around and talk i i hope there's more with her i want a little bit of an adventure with her and misora just hanging out and like you know fighting a smash or something when when those two are gone in hokuto and then they're just you know just trying to hold back a smash in toto i don't know we'll see anyways I think that just about does it. If you liked this episode, hit that like button and comment down below. Tell us what you thought about this episode and subscribe if you want to hear more from us each week. Um, I said earlier that the the uh, build watch long is in the eye icon, but also don't forget the uh, Q Ranger stuff. Q Ranger watch along. And also don't forget the q ranger review uh that should be going up at the same time as this episode uh and also again i want to pimp out the anime cast uh coming back um for their seasonal show of first impressions of the first episodes of the anime this season and that is available right here i suggest that you watch the episodes or you know just you know get through some just understand what you're getting into what anime that they're covering before you hop in because they they've got some pretty some pretty uh fresh hot fresh thoughts and they do go into a slight bit of spoilers but you know um anyways that just about does it keep it juicy